In this video, we're going to go over the data and statistics quick check homework. This is MMR 1871. Let's begin. So, uh, this copy isn't really great, but you can still read it. Still readable. So, the number of points in the first five games of the football season are listed below. What is the mean number of points scored? So, the mean is the average or... What that is, is like when you add up all the numbers and you divide by the number of numbers. So we have to add up 38, 29, 16, 42, and 33. And then we have to divide it by how many numbers there are. There are five games, which means we're going to divide it by five. So what I'm going to do is 38 plus, 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 plus. And you're going to take the whole thing and you're going to divide it by five. That's like my little division bar. So I'm going to do that in my calculator right now. I have 38 plus 29, plus 16, plus 42, plus 33, and I got 158. So I got 158 at the top, and I need to divide the whole thing by 5. So if I divide that by 5, I got 31.6, which is right over there. Sweet. Let's go to number 2. Number 2 is... Uh which of the following, sorry, which of the following is likely to have the greatest variability? Is it, uh, variability is like difference. Um, so the gr cost of a piece of candy from a vending machine? Mm, I don't know. Normally cost of candy isn't that much different. It's not like the cheapest is 99 cents and the most expensive is like $500 for a piece of candy. So no, the cost is usually pretty similar. The height of all the students at West Middle School Hmm, it's going to be pretty different because you can have really short students and really tall students. So maybe this one. Maybe. I'm probably going to put an X to the first one. The age of all the students in sixth grade? Probably not. Probably they're going to be 11, 12, 13, something like that. And finally, the number of days in a month. The variability is pretty low. I mean, February has 28 days, sometimes 29. And the month with the most days will have 31. So not that either. So the height of the students is probably going to have the most variability. All right, number three, the survey, the survey or a survey of sixth grade students measured how many miles they traveled to school. The distance was compiled, um, so it's complied, but it should have been compiled, and displayed in a histogram. Which of the following statements best describes the data? So uh, here it is. Here's the kids that live between 0 and 0 0.4 miles versus kids that live between 0 0.5 and 0 0.9. 1 and 1.4, 1.5, 1.9. So as you can see, this data just kind of starts pretty low, pretty high. So it's skewed over to the right, which means that uh, most of the kids live pretty close, and then very few live far away. So let's read it. The data is skewed left as most students live close to the school, as you can see. Whereas, if you remember, skewing to the left means that it's smaller on the left, the tail's on the left, but it, the tail's on the right. So it's actually skewed to the right. The data is symmetrical as most students live far from school. That's not true either. This, it's not symmetrical. Symmetrical means like it's kind of like there's a big peak in the middle. C, the data is skewed right as most students live close to the school. That is true. And D, the data is symmetrical. That is not true. Symmetrical means, again, you have like a mound in the middle and then lower at the ends. So let's look at number four. Students record the number of minutes they read each day. The box plot shows the summary of the results. Which statement best describes the data? So this is the minimum. This is the maximum. This is the first quartile. Uh, so I'm going to call it Q1 or... Uh, lower quartile. Uh, this is the half or the median or or the second quartile. And this is the third quartile. No, oh, half. So, anyways, you can call it Q2 or the half or... Um, anyhow, uh, the median. Uh, so, which is true? A quarter of the students read from 20 to 30 minutes. Is that true? Well, yes. What a quartile is, is this right here. Oh, let me use blue ink. This distance right here is about 25% of the data. And this is another 25% of the data. And this is another 25% of the data. And this is also another 25% of the data. So is it true that 25% of the kids read between 20 and 30? Well, this is 20 and this is 30. So yeah, that is true. Is it true that the least number of students read less than 30 minutes? Uh, the least 
number of students read less than 30 minutes? No, that's not true. Uh, the least, uh, about half the students read less than 30, and then half read more. Over half the students read 40 minutes or more. Well, this is the halfway point, and this is 40, so half the students should have been right here. Half the students actually read 30 minutes or more. And finally, the average number of minutes read was 47. Average number is not actually 47. It would be, um, can't find it on here exactly. So actually, it could be found over there. So uh, F is the correct answer. Let's look at number five. Which of the following? does not represent a statistical question. Yeah, by the way, this is the mean, not the median. Which of the following does not repre represent a statistical question? A statistical question is just a question with multiple answers. So like, do you want to go to the store is a yes or no question. Are you five feet tall is a yes or no question. But uh, so it has one or two, uh, just two, ans two answers. But a statistical question will have multiple answers. Like how tall are you? Because one person might say four feet. Another might say five feet. How old are you? you? There are multiple answers. So those are statistical questions. So how tall are students in my class? That is statistical. Um, how many hours per week do you practice sports? That is statistical. There are multiple answers. How many laps can the students on the track team run? That is also statistical because they can run multiple laps. How much do the students on the football team weigh? There's only one answer to that, not multiple answers. Um, by the way, uh, statistical yes or no does count <laughs> as statistical. Uh, I forgot to mention that. Uh, but how much do they weigh? No, there's only one answer. Uh, they can, um, how much do the students on the football team weigh? Actually, you know what? Hold up. I'm getting confusing myself over here. How many hours per week do you practice? Huh? Oh, you know what? This is not statistical because it says, do you practice? You can only have one answer, but how tall are the students in my class? So this has multiple students, so it's statistical. So this is not statistical. How many laps can the students run on the track team? You're asking multiple students, multiple answers. How much do the students weigh? That's multiple students, so that's multiple answers. So uh, B is not statistical. Oh, I'm sorry about that confusion. Let's try number six, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, so one person means one answer. Let's do number six. The dot plot shows the number of hours the students in Miss Ross's class, Mr. Ross's class, slept last night. Which of the following statement is not correct? So, which one is not correct? Um, we had a kid who slept five hours, a couple of kids who slept six hours and ten hours. So, there are a total of 17 students in Ms. Ross, Mr. Ross's class. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Uh, that is true. There are a total of 17 students. Uh, they're asking for which of them is not correct, though. So that's not our answer. Exactly nine students slept for less than eight hours. So less than eight hours does not include the eight. So how many students slept less than eight hours? And that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine students slept less than eight hours. That is also true. So that's not our answer. H, more, more than half the students slept for at least seven hours. So more than half the students slept for at least seven hours. At least, at least means seven or more. So more than half would mean like uh, if 17 is how many students there are total. More than half, half of 17 would be um, would be uh, eight and a half, eight point five. So you, we should have nine students slept at least seven hour, hours. So is that true? So at least seven includes seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh yeah, that's true. That must mean J is not true. All the students in Mr. Ross's class need more sleep. Uh, that's not a question we can answer with this graph. So J is our correct answer. Number seven. Number seven is asking us. A survey of North Middle School staff included member ages. The ages were com <laughs> compiled and displayed in a histogram. Which of the following statements best describes the data? So let's look at the data. 
Uh, it looks like none of the staff is 10 through 19 years old, which makes sense because uh, an 18 or 19 year old staff is pretty young and they don't have that many. Um, so most of them look to be uh, 30 to 39, fewer at the end. So this looks like it goes up like that. I wouldn't say that it's even, it's still kind of skewed uh, to the right. But there are, let's look at the info. There were at 12 staff members between the ages of 20 and 29. Is, there tr is that true? There were 12 staff members between 20 and 29. 20 and 29 is right over here. So 12, that is not true. There are like 10 staff members between that age. Uh, B, the number of staff members under the age of 40 is equal to the number of staff members that are 40 and older. So number of staff members under 40. So let's look at the staff members under 40 or 40. So this is 40. That means all of these staff members right here. So it'll be helpful to actually write the numbers. This is 18. So that's 28 total. This right here is 12. And this is uh, 6. And this is uh, over here is 2. And this is, it looks like half two, so one. So it's saying the number of staff members under the age of 40 is equal to older than 40. So this is 28 right here, and this is 12 plus six, that's 18 plus two, that's 20 plus 21. No, it is not split in half, not true. Let's look at C. C says 60 staff members were included in the survey. Well, that's 10 plus 18 plus 12. I better add this up with my calculator. 10 plus 18 is 28 plus 12, that's 40, plus 6, that's 46, plus 2, plus 1, that's 49. Only 49 members were on this survey, so that is not true. That must be mean D is correct. Let's make sure. A total of 10 staff members are 50 years or older. 50 years or older. So 50 years or older includes this, this, and this. So that's 6, 7, 8, 9, hmm. That's not true either, unless I messed up. Oh my goodness, I did mess up. That's not six, it's, if I look closely, it's in between here and here, which is eight and six. That's actually seven. So that's seven, two, and one. So that should that is a total of 10. So good thing I checked closely. Um, I knew I did something wrong, but yeah, that is the information right here. Make sure you look carefully. Unfortunately, the graph is so small. Question number eight. Question number eight is asking us, the number of free throws made by the members of a basketball team are shown. Okay, here are the numbers. Which best represents the data? So I have all this info. Is it in order? Yes, it is. It looks like it's in order. So it's having, uh, it's a histogram, 50 to 59. Uh, and it looks like <clears throat> ranges of 10. So how many people did 50 to 59? That's only three people who did 50 to 59. Uh, let's look at my next range is, uh, let's do it in a different color. Let's do it in blue. Uh, 60 to 69 is only this many people. And that's one, two, three, four, five. That's five. Let's look at 70 to 79. 70 to 79. That is a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven people. And 80 to 89, that's just two people right there. So, uh, three, that's not true. Three, uh, that's true. Three, five, mm, no. Three, that's true. Five, that's true. Seven, that's true. And two, oh, that's true. Let's, yeah, that looks like it's correct. Let's make sure. Three, no, not three. So, H is the correct answer. And finally, let's look at last two, nine and 10. Employees were asked how many miles they traveled to work each day. The data shown below in the box plot, which of these statements best supports the data? Well, this is the minimum. The least amount of miles traveled is 10. The most looks like it's like somewhere over there, 54, 55, something like that. The interquartile range starts at 20 and 40, and the mean looks like it's at 35, maybe. Um, so median. Actually, it looks like the median is, I'm sorry, I'm making lots and lots of mistakes here. And I said 
this right here. That right there is the median, not the mean. I keep talking, I keep making that mistake. Yes, this is the median, not the mean. So the median is around here. It looks like it's about 35. Uh, so it wouldn't be A. Could be B. Uh, wouldn't be C. Median 35 could be D. So the IQR is either 20 or 45. Uh, to find the IQR, interior quartile range, you just subtract the third quartile from the first quartile, upper from lower. That's 40 minus 20, which gets us 20, which means B is our answer. Finally, the city of Smithville records how many minutes a customer waits to talk to a representative on the phone. What is the mean number of minutes a customer waits? Some customers wait zero or one or two, up to six. Uh, the number of minutes on hold. So what is the mean number? To find the mean number, you actually have to add up all the numbers and divide by the number of numbers. So you have to add up zero plus one plus one plus two plus two plus three threes plus four plus one, two, three, four, five, five fives, two, three, four, five, plus six, plus six. So you may be thinking, is there a faster way to do this? Yeah, I guess you could say zero. This is two. This is, if you add it up, that's four, and that's three times three, that's nine. Four times one is four. Five times five, that's 25. Six times uh, two is 12. So you can just add up these numbers as well. 0 plus 2 plus 4 plus 9 plus 4 plus 25 plus 12. And then you need to divide it by the total number of people in the survey, which is, let's count the people in the survey, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So you need to divide the whole thing by 16. So uh, I'm going to add those numbers up. And let's see, 0 plus 2 plus 4 plus 9 plus 4 plus 25 plus 12. You're going to divide that by 16. I got 56, divide that by 16. I got 3.5 as my answer, and that's it. That's how you do this. A little bit of confusion. Hopefully, I didn't mess you up with the median mode thing and that interquartile range, the box plots. Go ahead and try some questions on your own. Good luck.